Hey YouTube, it's Marita and welcome to another edition of the Nurse Lounge. We are going to talk about today some reasons as to why people or nurses are leaving bedside nursing altogether. So if you want to see my opinion on why nurses are leaving bedside, then please stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. My name is Dr. Marita P. I'm a registered nurse for 17 years. My specialty is OBGYN, Well Baby Nursery. I am a nurse educator and I teach at HPCU and I am doctorally prepared. So today we're going to talk about specifically what are some reasons as to why people are leaving bedside. So I left bedside just last year after doing 16 years on the floor as a nurse. So I worked for 16 years as a, as a nurse. And so I'm going to talk about some of my reasons for leaving and then some general reasons as to why everybody else leaves bedside nursing. And I want to impress the importance upon you having a plan for your future self. You know, when you come out of nursing school, anybody watching this video, when you have, when you come out of nursing school, you come out with a mindset, a lot of us do anyway, of, I'm going to work the bedside. It's going to be great on and on and on. But the truth of the matter is when you have done even two years on, to, on the floor as a full-time nurse, you get burnt out and you get up burnt out for various reasons, which we'll kind of touch on in this video. So for me, let's go ahead and talk about, you know, how nursing was when I first came out of school. And then I will kind of talk about what led me to move out of nursing, also, not nursing, but bedside altogether. So I graduated from nursing school back in 2004. Okay. And, um, sorry, I have a hair in my eye. So I graduated from nursing school in 2004. And in my first year, I could already tell you, I knew I was not gonna be doing this for the next 30 years. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Um, it's just not what I thought it was going to be. I do not think that, um, nursing school prepared me for, and maybe they didn't have a responsibility to, maybe that was my job to learn on the, on the floor. Um, I had a good backing, a good understanding, a good foundation in terms of how to take care of my patient. What I was not in nursing school and critical thinking, I had a good background in that. I have no faults or no issues or no complaints regarding that in my program. My concerns were when I got to the floor and didn't understand the politics of how nursing and healthcare works. I did not understand at that point in time that healthcare was a business first and healthcare possibly second or even third. Healthcare is a business just like education is a business. It's all about the money. And just with anything else in life, you cannot function without money coming in, revenue coming in so that you can pay your bills, whether it be your hospital bills or whatever it happens to be, pay the bills. So healthcare is money first, business first, business always is first, at least here in the States. Um, and then healthcare second or even third in terms of ranking, if you will. With that being said, when I realized that, I think my eyes opened up a lot about what I perceived what my role in my job as a registered nurse or a nurse period to do. And then I better understood about staffing ratios and why they did what they did. I have a better understanding as to why California is unionized in terms of their, their nurses and the rest of us are not. Here in Tennessee, we're not, we don't have a union here. So therefore, what they say goes. Um, my staff ratio was one to six, but it was not unheard of for have us to be one to seven. And eventually I actually put my foot down and simply said, you know, I'm not taking seven patients on a regular basis. I have no problem taking one for the team. I have no problem, you know, helping out being a um, team player. But what I found was that once you said yes to something, that they kept on doing that over and over and over again. And that was an issue of concern for me. So once you, it's kind of like that saying, you give an inch, they take a yard. That's exactly how it is in nursing. You give an inch, they take a yard. So when you go and do something as a favor to somebody or whatever it happens to be, management begins to expect you to continuously to do that 
over and over and over again. And it got to the point where I'm like, I'm not, this is not safe. You're not providing me any help. You're not providing me any text. You, we barely get a lunch. We barely get to go to the bathroom and you want me to take seven or eight patients? Because that's what ended up happening. It ended up being seven patients this time. Oh, this time just, just eight. And then we're going to have this, you know, somebody discharge. And then you have three discharges. Okay. Yeah, I have three discharges for today, but it doesn't mean they're all going to discharge now. And at the moment I have six patients or seven patients. I'm not taking any more patients. So until they leave, then I will take some more patients. So true story. Towards the end of my bedside career, bedside part of it, I went into work one day and I, um, for some, for some reason, I never do this. For some reason, I went to the floor first and I simply looked at the floor and looked at the board, whiteboard, and I saw that they had, um, 20 patients for three nurses. Our ratio, like I said, is one to six. And because it's one to six, um, that means we get six patients a piece. Well, when there's 20 patients on the floor and there's only three nurses and there's nobody else coming in as your fourth nurse, then that means there's going to be two nurses who take seven patients while one nurse takes six. So before I even clocked in, so I had got to work. I had not clocked in at this point in time. I went to the floor. The nurses, the day shift nurses who I was working with was there. And I said, let me go ahead and tell y'all right now. I'm not taking seven patients. I'm not. So either you give me six patients or I go home. And that's what, that was my stand and I stuck to that. I'm going home or you give me the six patients. If you all choose to take seven patients, that's fine. Now, let me give you a little backstory on that part. So those two patients, I saw them wheel them over at change of shift from labor and delivery. Now, you may say, well, if they were ready to come to postpartum, what is wrong with that? Well, everything's wrong with that. And a situation in labor and delivery, I know nothing stops just because of change of shift. I know that. But these patients were stable patients. If they're able to come to postpartum, that means they're, they're supposed to be stable. That also means that there is also nobody in the back in labor delivery. That means that the three nurses in labor delivery came in to no patients because they, they had willed those two patients over to postpartum. Now, the problem with that is none of them nurses come over there to help us. They could have kept those two patients until we discharged at least two patients and then we could have taken them on like normal. That would have been acceptable to me. I would have no problem with that. Um, but no, they wanted to get rid of their patients because they're scared of the nurses and scared of day shift and scared of management. See, I don't I don't play with that. Um, I don't care who you're scared of. What we're going to do, what we're not going to do is go ahead and overload me. You're not going to come over and help. Now, if they're going to bring them over and one of them is going to come over and take a patient load or at least take those two patients, I would have been cool with it. But that's not what happened. So when I walked in, like I said, I ended up saying I'm not going to uh, take seven patients. So you all make a decision right now. Either I clock in and take six and you all take seven or I can go home and you all take 10 apiece. Choice is yours. And of course, they elected to take the six page or the seven. Both of them took seven patients and I took six. Now, with that being said, I did have some people going home and I went ahead and took the first admission after that because once my patients went home, that was down to five. So I took the next admission. They still had seven apiece. So with that being said, you know, I had to stand my ground. And I find that we as nurses do not stand our ground, especially as new nurses, we don't stand our ground. And as a result, we take, we take, we take, we take. And then we also want to cry it out. We come back and the next thing you know, we are burnt out. Again, that's one reason as to why we're leaving the bedside because we are burnt out. Why are we burned out? We're burnt out because of the fact that for one, the story I just said, patient ratios. We're burnt out because of the fact that um, we're not respected by management. We're burnt out because of the fact that day shift gets treated differently than night shift. We're burnt out because of the fact that in labor and delivery or the OB unit, um, postpartum is kind of like the stepchildren. Um, we don't really get the same treatment as labor and delivery. That's at our facility, at our facility. Now, if you all have a Kumbaya uh, type unit where everybody works together, that's great. Some small hospitals actually work very well like that, but the hospital I worked at was not good in that realm. Um, that they may get a pizza for labor and delivery for their hard work, but yet you don't think that hard work trickles over to postpartum. So we don't get a pizza for, for, for our hard work, stuff like that. Favoritism. Again, these are the reasons that's why people always tend to leave, um, while they get burned out. And with that being said, it's very difficult to feel like you are a part of the team that you're respected when no one really respects you when you are just simply here to take care of patients. Another reason why people leave bedside is because they begin to realize that you are just a body, meaning that you just have the credentials. Hey, they don't care if you work six days, the past six days in a, in a row, they're gonna come and ask you when you work a seventh day. They 
true story, not my story, but a story of a coworker of mine who she needed to be off and she was actually off anyway um, because uh, she had to go to a funeral. And they called and said, hey, we're short staffed because you come in today. And she said, I already told you all I had a funeral to go to for, I think, her father or father-in-law, somebody close in the family. And um, they were like, okay, well, what time is the funeral? What time is the funeral? See, that, that's where you got me messed up. What time is the funeral? It don't make a difference. I'm not coming. What they asked her to do was to come in that morning, work until a certain time point. Maybe the funeral was at 1 o'clock. I don't remember what she said, but let's just say it was at 1 o'clock. They wanted her to come in till like 11, work till 11, leave, go to the funeral. After the funeral, come back to finish her, the shift. What? See, you don't even have any sympathy, empathy, or nothing for the fact that I've just lost or she has just lost a family member. And you talking about you want me to come in, work, and that's what I'm saying. That's the, that's the kind of disrespect that I'm talking about. You could care less about what I got going on, but you also want, um, you want me to come in, um, around the funeral time no for me personally i got married when i did get married the day that i got married they called me and asked me could i come in i said well i just got married today they're like okay is the wedding over i'm like yes and we had it was at the point of the of the day where we had already did everything we did not have a reception at that point in time um we just had the wedding and we was kind of doing our own thing headed out to our own personal dinner things like that and she was like well could you come on in now that you have gotten married congratulations by the way i'm like no i'm not coming so again, they don't respect you. You have to have boundaries. So again, that's the reason why people get burnt out because there's no respect. Um, management doesn't care. Um, they think you're a warm body. Speaking of that warm body, they will float you around like no other. So they will sit there and send you to a unit where you have no background, no knowledge base, no nothing because you are a registered nurse. They will do that to you. That's another reason why people get burnt out. Another reason why people get burnt out is because of the pay. So I could be have worked for the past 15 years as a nurse and a new grad will come in making more money than I make just because of the fact that um, they're trying to bait you in, so to speak. And how is that right? How is, there, how is it right that a new grad gets paid more money than the seasoned nurse who's been on the floor for 15 years or however many years it's been? And, and that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. Um, so that's another reason why people get, they quit bedside nursing. Another reason is because of the, the fact that the hospital is open 24-7, 365. We don't shut down on holidays, weekends, or nights. So with that being said, sometimes when you are working as a nurse, people don't realize until they get into it that, you know what, this, this profession or this particular job at the hospital is not conducive for a family. Uh, being a nurse in a hospital setting is not conducive for families, meaning that people are like, okay, why aren't you off on, on, on Thanksgiving? Why aren't you off on Christmas? Because the hospital's open and I have to work my schedule. I have to work my holiday. And when you went to the hospital, you knew that, but you know, it gets daunting time after time after time where you're missing all the holidays, all the events, everything. So what do you do in that situation? You just simply, you know, end up missing everything. And then you realize you've missed birthdays. You've missed holidays. You've missed your children's events field trips, you've missed their birthday celebrations, you've missed things that you really would have wanted to attend um, for your children or for your family when you are working in the hospital. Another reason why people want to leave bedside is because of the fact that back to the money kind of, but if you work at a hospital, this goes back to respect as well. And you're worried about your retention, right? So you have an influx of people who quit for whatever reason, probably to the reasons that we just named. Um, but then they hire travel nurses. Okay. I have nothing against travel nurses. So if you're a travel nurse, I'm not talking about you directly. I'm just saying when you are a full-time staff nurse at the hospital and you get down staff because the travel nurse is coming in and they're guaranteed their shifts, that's the issue to full-time people. We have benefits that we need to maintain. We have to work. We need our money. And the travel nurses are supposed to be there to supplement us, to help us. They're not there to replace us. However, they will call you off, at least at our facility, call a full-time nurse off because the they've paid for a traveler. And they've paid almost double for the traveler than what we get paid. So if you have the money to pay the traveler double what we get paid, why can't you just pay your nurse accordingly maybe not necessarily double, but pay them more so they will stay and treat them better. I don't understand that logic, but that is a business mindset. I don't understand how they're actually coming out in the um, in the, in the the black. It looks like they will come out in the red because of the fact that you have to spend so much more money to pay for a travel nurse, but that's neither here nor there. People have issues with that. 
And then they they treat the travel nurse some kind of way because they are mad that he or she is getting all this money and come in and they sometimes give them the worst patient load. Um, another story for another day. But I'm just saying, you know, there's reasons as to why we tend to leave bedside nursing. So one more reason as to why we tend to leave bedside nursing is just because we have done it too long because our um, body is breaking down on us. Um, I remember experiencing severe knee and back pain and it got to the point where when I was working in my knees and back and the plantar fasciitis and just all those things that was happening to me, I'm like, okay, I don't want knee replacements. I don't want to have back surgery. I want to move on to something in which I could do that would not cause me so much pain. And of course, for me, we were not eating the best and it kept me away from my kids. So, you know, people move on for, 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 for health reasons because it's stressful to work on the floor. It's stressful when you have all these situations, plus your body takes a toll on, it takes a toll on your body, especially if you work night shift. Those of you who work nights, I worked nights for 12 years out of my 16 years on the floor. 12 years I worked nights and I did not realize how bad I felt until I came to day shift and got to sleep like a normal person. That's when I realized, wow, I have been really harming my body because I've been working against my circadian rhythm. I am eating to stay awake, drinking caffeine to stay awake. And so therefore I'm gaining weight, which is not healthy anyway. And I just had a hard time with that. So I did it for 12 years. Um, I had to do it for 12 years because of the fact that I had more children and I needed the shift diff. And so we had baited into things like that. So those are a few reasons as to why people leave bedside nursing. If you can name some more, please comment those below. Um, there's many more. This video is not all inclusive. There are so many reasons and there's personal reasons too why people leave. Sometimes people have babies and um, things like that or maybe they um, find themselves in a better financial situation where they don't need certain kind of money so they can be able to move on. In my case, I got more education and I have more options. So since I have more education, more options, it was just time for me to go ahead and move on. So Comment those reasons below that maybe you have left bedside or reasons why you are thinking about leaving bedside to do pursue something else and kind of what are you trying to pursue? So as usual, follow me on IG if you so choose. I will have it here. Also follow me on TikTok. I spend a lot of time on TikTok and I get a lot of questions over there and I usually bring those to YouTube and answer them in full video form. So if you want to continue to see good content, definitely go over there and check out some of the things that I have going on over there as well as ask your questions here. I'll create a video for you. And until the next time, you all take care. Bye-bye.